I have for you the top 10 Singer Sewing Machine questions I get asked all the time. Hi, I'm Sarah from SewingMastery.com where we take a sewing machine, open them up, and then do a short video on every page of the manual. So we've done quite a few Singer machines that we have posted. And again, everything I'm gonna talk about, there's gonna be links below this YouTube video for you to reference and get to additional information that will be correct for you your Singer machine. So in no particular order, but one of the first things I wrote down as a top 10 question was one I get all the time is what bobbin do I use for my machine? So yes, there are different sizes of bobbins for many of the different Singer machines out there. So you do need to uh, research. Um, you can go to Singer's website. They will often have that machine and then it'll say which bobbin it will work with. Um, you can also go into to a local sewing machine store and they will be able to help you. If you have at least the bobbin that came with the machine, take that bobbin in and they will be able to help you make sure you're getting the identical bobbin. Bobbins are not something you can mix and match. So just because you had a Singer machine from years ago does not mean that those bobbins fit in this machine. A question along the line of bobbins I get all the time is with metal versus plastic bobbins. So is there a difference? And there actually is not. But how that machine was manufactured, it was set up that if it came with metal bobbins, the machine is set for a slightly heavier bobbin in for bobbin tension. So just because you think they're the same size and you go from one to the other, um, a lighter weight plastic bobbin, which all it is is a holder, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter that it's metal or plastic, so don't be afraid of that. But just the fact that the lighter plastic bobbin, the machine is then tension set for that lighter weight. So just like I said, just don't mix and match. Make sure that you're always buying the same kind of bobbin and that you don't just take bobbins from another machine and think that they are going to work. Uh, there is a proper way of putting bobbins in when it's a drop-in machine. So make sure that you're looking in your manual or check out some of our videos of how to insert a bobbin and see which one matches your machine and then you'll know that you're putting in the bobbin correctly. So you got a 50-50 chance, but it is a, a thing for those bobbins to spin the correct direction when they are being put into the machine. Tension is another question we get asked all the time. Well, my tension is off, I hear, or I hate my machine because the tension's never right. So let's talk tension for just a little bit. And again, I'll put a couple links below where you can check out some of our tension videos for different models of machines, but here's what you need to know about tension. Number one, if you are using good quality thread. Now, just because you get a whole pack of thread does not mean it's good quality thread. Usually your local sewing machine store can help you with some of the better quality threads. Um, there are just some threads out there that just shouldn't be put into sewing machines. So going back, when you have tension, if you have the same thread in your needle that you do in your bobbin, you should have to adjust tensions. Now, if you are sewing along and you look on the underneath of your fabric and you are seeing loops and gobs of thread, that is not a tension issue. I'm gonna to get to that shortly. That is an operator error of you not knowing how to thread your sewing machine. So again, check out our videos on the proper way to thread your machine. And it is all in how you are threading the top of the machine and not getting it in the tension discs up top. And we have a couple, what we call tension tests videos where you can learn how to test if you are threading it correctly. So those loops on the back, not a tension issue. A operator, I didn't thread my machine right issue. Tension is adjusted when you have a thicker thread on one side and a thinner thread down below or vice versa. And the stitches are not balanced. That's when you can take the dial at the top and go a little bit more to one side or to the other. One makes a little tighter or one makes a little looser, depending on which way you need to go. My answer to tension is after you've cleaned the machine, put a new needle in and made sure your machine is threaded correctly, tension is usually not the problem. But if you don't see the balance of stitch, you can always turn it a number or two to the right or to the, and if it gets worse, then go to the left. Um, so without trying to get into all the specifics, but don't just turn it just a little bit. Like a little isn't gonna really change anything that you could probably see. So change it a number or two, see if it actually changed anything 
and see if that might actually be your solution. Again, good quality thread is our next topic. So that is so important with the machines. You can put quality thread in a soy machine. It's a smoother thread. So if you just take a thread and take your fingers along it, and if it's kind of feels kind of bumpy and rough and thick and thin, that's not great quality thread. Your machine has to go, oh my gosh, it's thick, and oh my gosh, it's thin, and what is she doing to me? Um, you will find that the smoother the thread, a little bit more expensive, the smoother it runs through your machine and the better results that you're gonna get from your uh, selection. So make sure that that is something that you think about when you're purchasing thread. Don't go for the cheap stuff, it is not worth it. Now needles need to be changed often. I probably don't change even my needle often enough, but here's a way to kind of know when your needle needs to be changed. Number one, needles change based on the fabric you're using. So there's certain needles for heavy denim fabric, there's certain needles for stretchy fabric or knit fabrics, and there's different needles for different kinds and thicknesses of thread. So most people don't realize that the size of needle needs to also match the size of thread you're using, not just your fabric choices. But here's what you need to know. If you're sewing along and your thread breaks, like you're just like sewing along, nothing that you did and no thread in your machine and it just is not there. You will find that putting a new needle in your machine will make a difference. Usually after three to five bobbins of sewing, so that's a lot of sewing by the way, you will probably find that that needle is maybe making a little bit of a ticking sound. It might not be actually stitching as smooth as it did when you put that needle in. And you will definitely find that if you ever see a little loop of thread on the top of the fabric, that's you just your needle needs to be changed. So again, not a tension issue, not a sewing machine issue, not an operator error issue, just put a new needle in. And really before you do anything else trying to change anything, new needle is the first thing to change. But make sure you're putting the right type of needle in and the right size of needle. So if you're unsure, there's definitely videos that we have that can help you with that. Again, we'll put links to those videos down below in the description. Another thing that can make a big difference in how your success rate is when you sit down to sew is if your sewing machine is actually clean. Now this is not a really hard process, but people just don't do it. So when you sew, you probably notice how linty like your tables are, or even just, even at the needle, if you see a lot of lint kind of gathering up at the top, you'll find that sometimes threads are linty, but fabrics are linty too. Fleeces, flannels, those nice soft minky fur fabrics, and anything that you might work with with batting, those are gonna be very, very linty. And as you sew, the lint goes down below the throat plate. So you need to actually remove the throat plate from the machine. Again, we'll put some videos of me cleaning a Singer sewing machine so you know. And you're gonna need to brush it out. Do not blow the lint in. And don't use canned air, that's a no-no. <laughs> because you tend to push more in than out. There's a bobbin case down below. You need to pull out the bobbin case and all you need to do is clean it. Most machines just need a little cleaning. Some will require a little oil, but all in all, if you just get the lint removed from the machine, a lot of times those skip stitches, those breaking of threads will go away. And again, if you're thinking about changing that needle every three to five bobbins, let's go ahead and think about what we sewed with those bobbins earlier and find ourselves, just go in, clean it out, trust me. Sometimes when we open these machines up for service, we find loads of lint, like even worse than your dryer vent lint, totally not a good idea. So those are great. I did mention about like when people bring machines in for service, you will find that an annual service on a sewing machine is worth it. Take it into your local sewing machine store. If it's a Singer store, that's great. If it's not, um, all the other brands often have high quality service technicians on staff that they can service your machine. All the rest of the parts need oiling and lubrication. They'll make sure if anything has gotten off, they're gonna put it back. Your tensions are gonna get reset and it just gets, it's gonna get like a spa day. I mean, 
who wouldn't want that? You love it, I love it, uh, your sewing machine will love it. And if you kind of do it every year, it will make a difference. Your machine will last longer, it'll be smoother, and you'll definitely get more joy out of sewing. So definitely just hook up. If you don't know, ask your friends, see who is the best service technician in your area, and trust me, have your machine serviced regularly. Now before I go on to the rest of our most popular questions for Singer Sewing Machines, do note we have online courses that you can join us for. One of the ones is right behind me. We call that our Stitching Cosmos online course, where you get to learn about 25 different sewing techniques and feature about 18 different presser feet. We teach you, teach you everything about using all your decorative stitches, twin needle, couching, pin tucks, all sorts. There's tons of information. And an online course these days is something you get to keep. So if you get started on it, can't get back to it right away, note that you can always return to it at any given time and do a refresher course. Now, if you didn't even know accessory feet were so uh, popular for sewing machines, you will find so many great options and more than just what those feet were intended to be used for, we're gonna take them to a whole new level. So if you're tired of just sewing straight and you're ready to do something more, definitely check out our online courses. Again, you can watch 10 free videos from those courses to see what it's all about. And again, links are below this YouTube video. Needle threaders are very common on soy machines these days. But if you think about how small a item would need to come through an eye of a needle to help you thread it, it is a very small piece of metal in a hook formation. So it's very delicate. So learning how to use your needle threader correctly will make sure that you don't accidentally bend it or break it. So sometimes people just try to use it and then they just get frustrated and they never use it. I'm like, oh my goodness, it's going to be such a time saver. I mean, I can still see the eye of the needle. Okay, it's getting a little smaller, but I use a needle threader just for physical time saving and so I can get to sewing. I mean, that's one thing, especially with an embroidery machine, you will find that if you can have a needle threader, all those color changes are not so time consuming. So uh, needle threaders, as you learn to use it correctly, very gently and with the needle at the highest position, you are guaranteed not to bend it. Also, if you ever have any trouble, so you've put a new needle in, for example, and you don't get the needle high enough, you don't realize it, you tighten it down, the needle eye will still be here and the needle threader will come and be like, where's the hole? And that would be also a clue before you sew with the needle way in the wrong position that you didn't get the needle high enough. So I always recommend to my students to use their needle threader just for a make sure the needle is all the way where it's supposed to be. So again, just be very gentle you will find that once you master it, you kind of can't live without it. Now, if your machine does not have a needle threader built into it, I will put a link below for a handheld needle threader. I love them, they're great. They'll just like push the thread right on through. And if you have a serger or other machines that don't have needle threaders on it, um, why not buy yourself a couple of them and keep them at each of your machines or if you have different tables, each of those stations. So whether you have a handheld needle threader or a built-in needle threader, let's get using it. A lot of people ask me about quilting feet, uh, needing a walking foot or a free motion quilting foot so they can quilt through all the layers. Yes, there are walking feet and free motion quilting feet that you can buy for your Stinger machine. Just make sure you've actually picked the correct ones for your exact model. So there are a, different models of Stingers out there. Make sure you are not just buying a generic one. A lot of the generic ones work, but there are Stinger sewing machines that do require some different sizes. So just make sure that you're buying the one that fits your machine. So I have two more common questions and they kind of relate to some of the things that we've already talked about. One of the questions is, is, is people describe sewing and find like the machine is growling at them and when they take their fabric out, they have lots of thread on the back side. So there's loops on the back side and that again is a operator error problem and it just requires you to re-thread the machine. Here's a couple things that you can do. Number one, make sure the presser foot is up when you thread the machine. Next, when you thread the machine, make sure that it really gets sunk into this first 
groove, like the one you go down before you come back up. This groove has the tension discs. Those discs are open when the foot is up. So when you thread it in there, it goes in. So make sure you kind of thread it with some purpose. Maybe hold the thread at the top with one hand and really help it into that groove. I've even been known to come here and then do a little flossing and you will definitely make sure everything gets deep where it needs to sit for the sewing machine to work. If the thread is not in those tension discs, you go to sew, you get the loops on the back side. Benefit, you, and they're very easy to remove because you literally just take your scissors and cut off the loops. They're super loose and they just come out of your fabric. So it's not hard to remove them. So when you re-thread the machine, now that you're a little mad with purpose, you'll find that you're threading the machine correctly. Then do that tension, tension test. And what that means is thread the needle, lower the presser foot, and then pull on that thread. When you pull on the thread, the needle will bend a little bit. The thread will be tight. If the thread is tight, you have threaded your machine correctly on the top. That means those discs closed on the thread, made it nice and secure, and now you're ready to sew without those bonus loops on the back of your fabric. Of course, people always see those loops and they think it's a bobbin issue, but it's not. It's actually a top issue. So double check that you have been putting your bobbin in correctly. Make sure it's getting into those tension areas down below. There is that as well. But just note that those loops are more of an operator error and all you have to do is thread the machine correctly. If that does not want to hold, it's time for a service. Your service provider in your area will make sure everything gets cleaned out and too much lint and, and gunk will keep that thread and kind of take and push it away and like out and that will also cause those loops. So if that's the case, definitely make sure that you have taken time to clean it or have it serviced on a regular basis. And the last one we get all the time is just my thread breaks. But now that you kind of know some of these highlights, when your thread breaks the next time, you know a few things to check. Number one, change your needle. Number two, clean out underneath your throat plate. Make sure that all the lint has been removed there. Those are two common things. And then make sure the quality of thread that you have chosen is to the level it should be. So if you've got grandma's old thread from 30, 40 years ago, let's not use this on your nice machines. Buy good quality thread, check with your local soy machine store, they will have the thread that they recommend. And trust me, they don't want headaches with yucky thread, so they don't even carry it. So keep that in mind when you're looking for quality thread, it makes a difference. So stock up on some needles, um, put the right bobbin in, clean your machine and have it serviced on a regular basis and your machine will love you back. Remember all the links below to all of these tips, other videos, our online course will be below and you can definitely check that out. So if any of these tips have been helpful for you, four things you can do to support our channel. Number one, subscribe. Number two, like the video. Number three, sharing is caring. So if you know of somebody else who could use these tips because they're always saying how much they hate their soy machine, share this video with them. And don't forget to post a comment of which tip helped you the most.